Let's see if we can get the molecular structure for butyl butyl cyclo cyclopentane. So you would just break this up the way we've done it in the last several videos. It is a it, it the suffix is ane, so it is an alkane, all single bonds. So single single bonds. It's pentane, so we're dealing with five carbons on kind of the base or on the kind of the backbone. So this is five carbons. And it's a cyclopentane, so it's five carbons in a ring. So it's five carbon ring is the backbone. And then we have a butyl group added to that five carbon ring. Now you might say, hey Sal, how do I know which carbon to add it to? When you're dealing with a ring and you only have one group on the ring, it doesn't matter. Because, well, let me just show you what I mean. So let's draw the five carbon ring. Let's draw the cyclopentane. So it'll just be a pentagon. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you, it's a ring, so you can connect them. One, two, three, four, five. Now, it doesn't matter where I draw the butyl group. It's all symmetric around there. We just have a ring, and it's connected to a, bu a butyl group at some point. It'll start to matter once we add more than one group. So we can just pick any of these carbons to add the butyl group to. Now, just as a review, the but prefix, that refers to, remember, methyl, ethyl, propyl, or, or meth, eth, prop, but. This is four carbons. This is a four, four carbon alkyl group. So let me just add it here. I could have added it to any of these carbons around this cyclopentane ring. So if I just add it right here, so I'm going to have four carbons. So one, two, three, four. That is the butyl part of this whole thing. And then let me just attach them up. So you might be tempted to just draw this right there. And actually, this would be right. This is butyl cyclopentane. But a question might rise. I just happened to connect the cyclopentane to the butyl at this first carbon on the butyl right there. I could have just as easily done it like this. I could have just as easily had a I could have just as easily had it like this. Where let me draw my butyl again. So I have one, two, three, four. So once again this is a butyl, but instead of instead of being bonded to the cyclopentane on my first carbon, Maybe it's bonded right here. Maybe, let me do it with that yellow color. Maybe it's bonded right here. Why, this seems like maybe this could also be butyl cyclopentane. It looks like we have a butyl group. This is butyl right here. I drew a butyl group right over here. And I also drew a butyl group right over here. But these are fundamentally two different molecular structures. I'm touching the first carbon here. I'm, I'm touching the second carbon over here. Now there's two ways to differentiate this. One is the common naming, and one is the systematic naming. So let me differentiate between the two. So in the common naming, and this can get a little bit involved. And this Frankly, it's probably the most complicated or, or, or a part of, of naming organic compounds. Systematic is often more complicated, but it's, it's easier to, I guess, systematically come up with it. So there's a common, and then there's a systematic. 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 So the common way of doing it is if you just if you just say butyl cyclopentane, that implies that you are bonding to the first, or depending how you view it, the last carbon in the chain. So this right here is butyl cyclopentane. This right here is not just butyl cyclopentane. What you would do is you you definitely have a cyclopentane ring. So this would definitely be a cyclopentane. Cyclo let me put some space here. This is definitely going to be a cyclopentane, cyclopentane. And you do have a butyl group on it. So we do have a butyl group, a butyl group. But because we are bonded, we aren't bonded to the first carbon. We're bonded to a carbon that is bonded to two other carbons. We call this sec butyl cyclopentane. Sec, let me, so this is sec. And everything I'm doing is obviously freehand. If you were to see this in a book, the sec would be italicized. Or sometimes it would be written as S, as S butyl, S butyl, butyl cyclopentane. Cyclopentane. 
And this sec means that we have attached to a carbon that is touching two other carbons. So you look at the butyl group and say, well, which of these carbons attached to two others? It's either that one or that one. And regardless of whether you're attached to this or this, if you think about it, it's fundamentally the same molecular structure. So that's what you do when you're attached to that guy right over there. But what about the situation? We're, we're dealing with just the common names right here. What about the situation where it looks like this? So we have our cyclopentane right there. And we have a, uh, a, I guess we could call it a butyl group. It'll have four carbons in it. But let's say that the four carbons look something like this. Let's say our four carbons. So we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four carbons. And we're bonded to this one right over here. So whenever you're bonded to, I guess, one end of the four carbon group, and it branches off at the other end, and it seems a little complicated. And this only deals for alkyl groups below really five or six uh, carbons. This we call an isobutyl group. So let me write this down. So this is this right here is secbutyl or s-butyl, sometimes for short. This right here, this right there, is isobutyl. Iso, it's actually. Iso, that is an isobutyl group. And then the last thing to worry about when you're dealing with butyl groups is something like this, is something like this. So let me draw it. So you could also draw four carbons like this. You have one carbon, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four carbons, and you're attached over here. Now this naming, this group, this group right here. And you're going to see the systematic naming is much easier for these compounds. This group right here, over here, the, the carbon you're attached to is attached to two other carbons. So it is sec-butyl. When you're attached to three, it is t-butyl or tert-butyl. So this right here is a tert, tert, tert-butyl group, or sometimes called a t-butyl. And I really want you to understand the difference here. The common naming, it's easier to say and easier to spell, but it's sometimes a little confusing. This is just straight up butyl. So you would call this butyl cyclopentane. This is sec-butyl, because you have this guy's connected to two carbons. That's where the sec comes from. That's where the sec comes from. Sometimes it'll be s-butyl. So this could be called sec-butyl, sec-butyl cyclopentane, or s-butyl cyclopentane. This, because we're attached to the end away from this branching off, is still a butyl group since we have four carbons. But since we're attached here, this is isobutyl. So this is isobutyl cyclopentane. And then finally, since the carbon we're attaching to is attached to one, two, three other carbons, it is, tert, it is a tert-butyl or a t-butyl group. So this is t-butyl cyclopentane. That's the common naming. So maybe I should clear out systematic here just so it's clear to you just so it's clear to you that everything we've done here is common naming, is common naming. So let me write down. It won't hurt to write them down again. Because the more familiar with, you are with these, the better. So this is just butyl, butyl, butyl cyclopentane. This is S or secbutyl, secbutyl cyclopentane. And this is iso. Isobutyl, butyl cyclopentane, cyclopentane. I'm going off the screen here. And then finally, this is tert-butyl, or t-butyl cyclopentane. Now, I said these are the common naming. What are the systematic naming? Well, in the systematic, this is still butyl cyclopentane. So let me write this down. Systematic, systematic. This is still butyl cyclopentane, which makes sense. This is, this is very clearly a, a cyclopentane. This is very clearly a butyl group. But the systematic naming, what we try to do is we try to name, we try to name this group right here just as we would name a traditional chain, but we end it with an ill. So if you look at this right here, what we do is we just consider the chain where we attach. So if you look at we attached over here, so the longest chain that it from that point is there and there. So if you look at it like that, it looks like you have one, two, three carbons, and you have one carbon attached on the beginning. So this little group right here in the systematic naming, this looks like a one, two, three, three carbons. That's the prop prefix. 
So we're dealing with a prop, and it's, it's all going to be one group. So it's a propyl group. This is a propyl group, but it has a methyl. Remember, meth is one carbon. It has a methyl group attached on the first carbon. So this is one, one methyl, one methyl propyl. Now that describes just the group. That describes one methyl propyl describes just this part right here. That describes just that right over there. And then to, to have the whole compound, to describe the whole compound, you'd put this in parentheses. So this is the systematic naming. So one methyl, one, I put an L there, but then the same color. One methyl, because you have the, you're, you're starting where you're attaching. So one methyl, you have a methyl group right there on that first carbon. It's a propyl chain. One, two, three. Propyl, and then you would say cyclopentane. Cyclopentane. That's the systematic name for that. Now, if you look at this one right here, what in the common name is isobutyl, what you do is you look at where we attach. Where we attach is one, two, three carbons. So once again, I'm doing that same one, two, three carbons. So once again, this is a propyl. Prop is for three. But the methyl group now is attached to the one, two, third, the second carbon. So this is two methyl. Let me make some space here. This is two methyl. So that describes this group right here. That describes this entire group, cyclopentane. Cyclopentane. Remember, this is a systematic name. You might sometimes see this referred to as isobutyl cyclopentane or 2-methylpropyl cyclopentane. And this is actually a YL. Spelled it wrong. And then finally, do the same exact idea here, but it becomes a little bit more interesting. Over here, we are attached to this carbon. And the longest chain I can do starting with that carbon is just one, is just one chain right there. So we just have a two carbon chain, right? One, two. The prefix for two carbon is ethyl or eth. Eth, and since it's a, a group, ethyl. And then we have two methyl groups. We have two, we have two methyl groups attached right over there. And it's attached on the one carbon, right? This is one and this is two. We call the one carbon where we are attached to the broader chain. So what this is going to be, you would actually write one comma one to show that we have two groups attached to the first carbon. And both of them are methyl. And so we write 1, 1, dimethyl, di for 2, dimethyl. So this entire group right here, which we also called t-butyl, when systematic naming, is 1, 1. We have two groups attached to this first carbon. 1, 1, dimethyl ethyl. That's this whole thing. This is the ethyl, and then we have two methyls attached there. That's why we write 1, 1. They're both attached to the 1. We have two of them. That's why we wrote di over there. So it's 1, 1, dimethyl ethyl, and then finally, cyclopentane. Cyclopentane. So hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much. I think if you watch the video over and over and try to practice it with your own problems, you'll see that the systematic name way is actually pretty, pretty logical. And actually, if you have more than five or six carbons in the group, they always, or they tend to always use the systematic naming.